Hello ladies and gents, I am Mr. SNS, and before this video begins I just want to say that the uh, audio completely cut out this time. It Moves has always been a series where the audio has had some problems, but straight up in this video there is no uh, audio, at least microphone audio, there's still gameplay audio. So instead I'm going to be giving a uh, voiceover, which is post, um, you know, post me playing it. Uh, and, and I'll get a little bit more into the details in the video, but for now, uh, thanks for clicking this video. Don't click away just yet, and uh, hope you all enjoy. Thanks. Hello ladies and gents, I am Mr. SNS and welcome back to It Moves. This video is a little different because um, I messed around with the audio. I was trying to make it so the audio wasn't terrible like it was in the last several videos. And uh, it worked at first, but suddenly uh, the, the my microphone cut out. Uh, so thankfully, because it was OBS, I still have the footage, I just don't have the audio. So right now, I am dubbing it in, more or less. <laughs> I'm not, don't worry, I'm not going to try and act like I'm re-experiencing this. I'm just watching it now, and I'm giving, I guess, live commentary on what's going on. So I spawn in here, and, uh... Yeah, I'll read things off and I'll try and still have fun with this. <laughs> so, this is just a little strange. Hopefully I'll never have to do this again, but... Yeah, at least I now know how to do this if I ever uh, need to again. It says, Woof. A bunch of school books. Uh, a poster for a play. Did I really leave the mouse icon on the screen? Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm looking back at this and... Oh, I think it's here. I noticed that there was... Like, my mouse was sliding. The feeling that something's invading your privacy, even, even ill will, is still disturbing. <laughs> I'm gonna need to read fast now. Yeah, but I noticed that I think I kind of slide a little bit too much, or there's a delay. Uh, sorry, my audio had to cut out, or my my, my audio cut out now for some reason. Um, yeah, so a bunch of school books. Good. You are. The clock has stopped, so now I guess I need to be tracking my microphone to see if it cuts out <laughs> while we're in the middle of this. Yay! Even if you don't know why they are here, you hold the greatest amount of fear for them. And yes, uh, I'll, I'll acknowledge the weird thing that just walked down the stairs. That definitely startled me. So you don't get any neat reactions out of me. You just... Uh, a bathtub in the middle of the classroom. You just have to bear with my... my... an old picture of what seems to be a religious man and woman. You just have to listen to the omniscient voice <laughs> it's a triceratops that knows exactly what's going to be happening uh yeah <laughs> a bunch of school books a stack of comic books so there's a part that uh where i just got lost here and you're gonna see that in a second the sounds of screams are awful they are even worse when they are your own <laughs> Still a bad reader. I'm sorry about that, guys. The locker. And there's a spooky thing. That startled me the first time. And even when I was uh, trying to dub over this the first time. Uh, yeah, but now... <laughs> locked. Locked as a locker is. And I couldn't go back in. So I go into this room here, a writing desk of some material, uh, with some material on it. Writing desk with some school material on it. A big filing cabinet. Various books that look like they would be hard to read. 
Looks like there is nothing inside. A writing desk with yeah, okay. But at least this time you don't have to you don't have to hear me in the background. See you you can actually hear me just yelling into the microphone. <laughs> okay, yeah. A pile of mattresses dirty and worn out. So this is the part where I get confused. Mattress. Uh, there's a dirty paper here. It reads knock knock. There's a dirty piece of paper here. The text is illegible. Illegible. Sorry. So, yeah, I, uh... I don't know. This was an interesting chapter, too, and so I'm kind of sad that the audio cut out. That's one... I, oh, yeah, and there we go. This is where I got confused. I couldn't get through the door. It was frustrating because I kept sliding too far. Um... But it's it's frustrating that this is the episode where my microphone decided to stop working because, you know, I found this part to be very interesting. Uh, but, you know, that happens. What are you, you going to do? You work with what you can. And that's, and uh, for one thing, uh, there was um, this issue, just the fact that it, my reactions would no longer be very genuine. Uh, it was now just kind of a sense of, why bother anymore <laughs> and then the other thing was uh my save file was up to date so if i wanted to do this this here i would have to go to another save file and replay the whole game up until this point and it would only take maybe like an hour but i just didn't feel like doing that so instead you're getting this just a, a, a voice I'm just watching and now I'm just... I'm, I, I had to click on it, and that's what was funny about that. And, and I think there was a monster. I, I, didn't, I didn't see that while I was talking, but I think there was a monster in there. And as you saw, there was another monster going down the, sta down the stairs there. So, yeah. <laughs> the lock on the door is broken. I don't think I can get in here. There are various high school, or there are various school rules written here. Sorry. And then these guys were creepy. Th th this was creepy. These dudes here, these like cow thingies. And there's just something about the way they move so slowly. This is eerie to me, especially just the fact that they don't do anything. It's like a whale to me. The uh, you know this big creature that technically could kill you, but just won't. And then there's something kind of creepy about a gentle giant, the idea of um, something large that has no ill intent. And I mean, it's comforting too, but it's... There are, there's a hole in the wall where roots have grown. But there, you know, there's just something kind of terrifying about uh, something that doesn't, but easily could just, you know, make things bad or whatever okay I'm in this room a busted old machine of some sort plants grow through cracks in the floor okay go down into the basement here Oh yes, this part was like a maze. It was a weird maze too. That's uh, yeah. You go up, and then but it's it's uh, it's weird because it's like a one of those looping mazes. It's not you know just set up. I think I had to go right. I think right was the correct way. So I actually got really close to what I was supposed to do on like my first try. But I didn't. I was close, but I didn't do it. You're supposed to go left here, and then up, and then right. But I went left again for some reason. Okay, I think my, my microphone still is cutting out, and I have no idea what that's about. This audio mixing thing is very new to me. But, you know. 
Anyway, so I get through the maze here. And hopefully this isn't too deafening. Both my voice and the game. I'm checking. So it's, it's a little difficult because I can't... I Sorry, I can't be listening to the um, footage while I dub over it because... Excuse me, I can't, I can't do it while I'm dubbing over because it just ends up... Uh, I can hear my own voice looping and that throws me off. I then start slurring my words. So we end up here with whatever this thing is. It's creepy, like, honestly. And, and I'm just there on this table thing, uh, or this, what is that, an altar? It's all shaky, ooh, sp spooky. They're closing in, just, what, why? <laughs> what is, like, what's wrong with this kid's nightmares? He's, he <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think the, the visuals in this game are just fascinating, I've, I've mentioned that before, just very fascinating visuals, you know, it's, it's beautiful in a very demented way and I don't remember what's going on here. Yeah, it's just music. Here we go. You're awfully quiet nowadays, is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. Alright then. I don't know why he read his lines like that. <laughs> We're just going to... Uh... I woke gradually. The room was once again dark. As my eyes adjusted, I could gradually make out the window and door and the walls, some toys on the shelf, and even to this day I shudder to think of it, for there was no noise. No rustling of sheets, no movement at all. I must have messed up the line, I had to probably cut it there or something. The room felt lifeless, lifeless not yet empty. The nightly visitor, that unwelcome, wheezing, hate-filled thing which had terrorized me night after night, was not in the bottom bunk. It was in my bed. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless. If I could not scream, I did not want to let it know I was awake. I had not yet seen it. I could only feel it. It was obscured under my blanket. I could see its outline. I could see its presence. But I dared not look. Or I could feel its presence. The weight of it pressed down on top of me. A sensation I will never forget. When I say the hours passed, I do not exaggerate. Laying there motionless in the darkness, I was every bit a scared and frightened young boy. If it had been during the summer months, it would have been daylight by then. But the grasp of winter is long and unrelenting, and I knew it would be hours before sunrise. A sunrise which I yearned for. I was a timid child by nature, but I reached a breaking point. A moment where I could wait no more, where I could survive under this immediately deviant abomination no longer. Fear can sometimes wear you out, make you th threadbare, <laughs> a shell of nerves leaving only the slightest trace behind you. Of you behind, sorry. Okay. My microphone went out again. 
Um, but yes, while I was off screen, I looked it up. It is threadbare. I, it's a weird word. But, yes, that is the correct pronunciation. Threadbare. Reminds me of Fredbear. <laughs> I had to get out of that bed. Then I remembered the crucifix. My hand still lay underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist around to find it, m minimizing as best I could the sound and vibrations caused, but it could not be found. I had either knocked it off the top bunk, or it had. I could not even bear to think of it been taken out of my hand, been taken from my hand. Without the crucifix, I lost all sense of hope. Even at such a young age, you can be acutely aware of what death is and intense, intensely frightened of it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there, dormant, passive, doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? Should I leap from the bed and hope that I make it to the door? Yeah, sorry about these pauses. What if it is faster than me? Or should I slowly slip out of the top bunk hoping not to disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that it had not stirred when I moved, trying to find the crucifix, I began to have the strangest of thoughts. Wonder what these thoughts are. Another dream. Chapter 6, The Abyss. Now, uh, this one, I am, um... Yep, okay, so this is where we're picking up in the next episode. And here, these are the save files. They're all at the... They're all, you know, they're all up to date. <laughs> so, there's not really much I can do. You know, I accept just do this. Anyway, yeah, so I'm underwater, so that's pretty cool. I'm not a... I... What's the fear of the ocean? I can't remember. Or, or deep bodies of water. It's like the lassa phobia. Uh, I'll fact check that. But yeah, I'm not scared of water, but I can tell this will be pretty intense. So I'm looking forward to the next episode. Anyway, hope you enjoy this video and this weird voiceover of me. <laughs> and if you did, please give this video a like, comment down below, and click that subscribe button. Thank you much for watching and for your patience. Goodbye.